day. Welcome to Music Motors and welcome to this, the 2021 Kia Exceed PHEV, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. This is the electric future. Instead of going fully electric, this gives you 36 or just above miles of pure electric range. It gives you over 200 miles to the gallon, but this gives you the best of both worlds because whilst it does give you that electric charge, it's also powered by a petrol engine, a 1.6 litre petrol engine, which combined with the electric motor means 140 brake horsepower, 265 newton metres of torque, 10.6 to 62 and 107 top speed, which means that this is a very well suited car to people who are slowly making that transition over to the inevitable electric future. In this episode of Music Motors, I put the Kia Exceed to the test, seeing if it exceeds all expectations or is it exceedingly good. And I'm literally out of exceed jokes. So uh, stay tuned, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Now, outside, Kia have a very distinctive design language, which I really appreciate because even on their smaller cars, Picanto and stuff like that, it still looks really, really quite good. But when you go up to things like a Stinger or a Sorento, that's where for me it looks the best. I wasn't sure how I was gonna deal in the flesh with this being a Exceed kind of, and this is an Exceed 3, so this is a relatively good spec. Now up front, really lovely design. It does have those bulges and it does have those lines that we've kind of grown to know and really quite like in Kia. The front end does seem very refined and honestly, the front end just looks really quite cool. Now the headlight cluster is distinctive and the grille design is unique. It just means that front end wise, Kia really have done actually quite a good job. Side profile wise, this it stands out among the car park wars, as it were, because it doesn't really resemble, for me, anything else kind of within its segment. 16 inch diamond cut alloys, which have a good amount of meat on them, which means they deal with potholes quite well, but they're not gonna get aesthetically tarred by English roads or European roads, curbs, potholes, the whole shebang. It's actually gonna deal with them pretty well. The side really for me is just actually quite a nice thing to look at whilst for me I probably would have preferred more lower profile alloys. These do suit the design and they're extraordinarily practical especially considering this is kind of edging on an SUV type of uh, design. Back end wise is where for me it's not quite there. I, I get it. I do quite like the lines, the light clusters are quite nice, but for me it's not a totally finished product, it's a little bit like it's got a big bum, but it hasn't got a big bum, just the design for me isn't totally there. That said, I don't dislike it, it's just not for me as in keeping as the rest of the car. Aesthetically though, Kia have, well, pretty much excelled in, in the design of this. It does look very, very cool. This red is absolutely lovely. And to be brutally honest, this car's got over 5,000 miles on it. It's been washed quite a few times, no doubt many times with a sponge. And genuinely, the paintwork is actually standing the test of time quite well. Motorway economy time. Now, obviously, being a PHEV, if you can plug this in, then your motorway economy is gonna be quite good. But what happens when the range runs out? What happens when you are solely reliant on the engine facility that this car gives you? Uh, I'm gonna find out. Uh, it's only about nine or 11 miles that I'm gonna be doing, but solely on the motorway. And just seeing, once you've run out of range, which is gonna happen, and maybe you've forgotten to plug it in overnight, just what sort of uh, economy do you return? So the whole concept of this motorway test is to say that, yeah, we know if it's plugged in, you're gonna get a million miles of fuel economy. But when you run out, what can it actually get? And over those nine miles of being sat at 60, 65 miles an hour, 
you've got over 60 to the gallon, 60.8 miles to the gallon, which by any means is good economy, let alone from a PHEV, because historically, we know that when these run out of fuel, the fuel economy goes crashing, tumbling down. But Kia are proving that their car can do the best of both worlds. And inside it's comfortable, it's quiet, very well suited to motorway driving, very sedate. And that economy is just mad considering I literally left with no charge. Stepping inside and that's where we know Kia are exceptionally good. Exceedingly good. Ah, I got one more in there. Because really you get in and you immediately feel build quality and you genuinely really do. Now whilst the seats are cloth, they're comfortable and they're holding. Whilst there isn't loads and loads of technology going on in regards to like touch screens here and there, there's enough and, and everything is placed in a place for ultimate and ease of use, if that makes sense. To turn on your heated seats and your heated steering wheel, all you have to do is put your hand on the gear lever. You can easily get there. The exact same goes for the climate control. You don't have to reach out of the way to touch anything on the on-screen navigation or anything like that. Everything else is either at your fingertips or easily within arm's reach, which is really nice because so many manufacturers are absolutely packing stuff into cars and sometimes they kind of neglect the fact that we don't have 11 arms. Headroom from a driver's point of view is quite good. Visibility is very, very good. Even though it does have sort of bulges on, on the bonnet, they don't restrict your view whatsoever. Good sized wing mirrors. Uh, your passengers equally have a good amount of, of legroom, headroom, front and back. The audio system, even though it's not a fancy do-it-all kind of system, is equally quite good and you do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Your boot space is pretty good. However, this is storing batteries, so you are kind of expecting it to not be exceptionally good. See, I could have made an exceed joke there, but I didn't. The boot space is enough and it will do all of your daily essentials, but put something like a bigger pram in there or maybe a few suitcases and very quickly you're running out of space. Don't get me wrong, it's more than big enough for a weekly shop. It's more than big enough for general lifestyles. But the ingress from everything that's been going on with this car to make it a PHEV means that the boot size is just a little bit less than I would have liked. The interior is beyond anything that really you could want quality wise. Let's be honest, you get in and it feels like it's built really well. It has lovely materials. It does have fake stitching, but there's nothing wrong in that. It gives you that kind of leather-esque look without the worry of A, maintaining it, or B, damaging it. Yes, there's a lot of piano black. So long as you look after it, you're not really gonna have any issues with it. And interior loud. And interior, when it comes to being on a run, the road ingress, well, it's actually pretty decent. It's not Rolls-Royce quiet, but by no means does it feel like it's been put together by a bunch of idiots basically it, it genuinely the interior just feels like it's really really well thought out very practical town economy because very importantly the PHEV will spend a lot of time around town but what happens if you forget to plug your car in overnight what can this return around town with little to no charge in it we know that it has a good electric range and we know that with that electric range comes like 200 miles to the gallon but when that range runs out, what is this like around town? Is it like we know PHEVs to be juicy? Or is it going to surprise us? So some 14 miles later of proper combined, but I'm trying to give it more of a town vibe test. And we've got 60 miles per gallon, which considering it was a real mix of both is quite surprising. And it really just shouts the fact that, yeah, this is a PHEV, but it doesn't drive and consume anything like traditional PHEVs. The fuel economy this returned is more like a traditional hybrid than giving you the actual facilities of pretty good range, just totally, uh, full electric, uh, the interior is comfortable, it really is quite suited to town driving and you really couldn't ask for more. Visibility is a good size above everything and you deal with potholes. 
this car is made to do everything and it so far does everything pretty well. Now performance, this is a performance segment part of it, doesn't mean I'm actually saying this is a performance car. Powered by a 1.6 litre petrol engine, 104 brake horsepower out of that 1.6, so it's been tuned for economy. That's the big thing with this car. Put that, that engine with the electric motors, you get 140 brake horsepower, 265 Newton meters of torque, 10.6 to 62, 107 top speed. Plug it in and you get 200 or more miles to the gallon. Realistically, there was at one point when I, when I had some charge in this and it was getting 999.9 miles to the gallon. It's pretty insane. 36.6 miles of that pure electric range. This is a very good starting point for people who want to go electric but just can't quite make the jump yet. Economy wise, obviously they claim 200 plus miles to the gallon. And whilst it's plugged in, totally achievable, without question. But what you'll find is that the second the electric motor runs out, like any PHEV, it's gonna come down. However, unlike a lot of PHEVs, it doesn't go to sub 30 or sub 40 miles to the gallon. It seems to sit at about 60 miles to the gallon, which is just absolutely insane. Because bear in mind, whilst it's propelling the car, it's also trying to charge the battery a little bit. So to be charging the battery and doing that whilst actually returning very good fuel economy, upwards of 60 miles to the gallon in some instances, just proves that Kia is still kind of ahead of the trend. I don't know a manufacturer with a PHEV that genuinely, without any charge in the tank, turns around what this can because let's be honest you will run it out of charge and when you run out of charge you don't want to be getting 30 miles to the gallon because all of, all of a sudden that smaller fuel tank because of the electric uh, capabilities then ends up running out even faster now on the road drive feel genuinely it does actually feel quite good it handles very very well you do feel a little bit of lumbering but generally not that much especially considering how much meat's on the tires, this does feel quite planted. You've got to give it its due. Where it doesn't feel quite so good is the brake feel, because obviously when you push down on the brakes, it's regenerating energy first. As a result, the brake feel is a little bit strange, not terrible and not totally disconnected, but a little bit spongy. Then again, this isn't a performance car. Funnily though, the acceleration is actually quite good and does feel better than the 10.6 that is claimed. And it is quite constant, even when it's out of battery power, it's got a good amount of pickup. Uh, being a DCT gearbox as well, and it's unlike a CVT, you don't hear it screaming its metaphorical testicles like through to you through the bulkhead because it's changing gear enough and genuinely suits this car very very well performance wise well yeah it drives very nicely not totally engaged but it has a good driving feel and the economy is just unquestionable kia really really have got a hold of exactly what their customers want so outside the design is lovely it's well put together not totally perfect for me could be for you but i think it's a very very good effort and in the supermarket wars, it stands out. The interior is unquestionably Kia, AKA pretty well built, packed full with equipment, and very comfortable. Suited to family life, Isofix, all those good bits. And the performance is more than acceptable, because let's be honest, how often do you need more than 140 brake horsepower? Like, where can you actually use it? The, the 0 to 60 time is more than feasible, and genuinely the economy is astonishing. If you keep this plugged in, it will absolutely wow and amaze you. If you don't get this plugged in, then it still acts like a ridiculously frugal eco box, which is not what you expect from a PHEV because historically PHEVs, when they run out of charge, they're not so good to the environment. But this one is. So the 2021 Kia Exceed PHEV plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Yeah, I think they've done a pretty good job.